Despite being relatively new to the US, armored combat is a sport that holds all the same glory and carnage from medieval times. Punish them, right? Make them puke. I don't care if he dies. Keep that sword moving. Using blunted medieval weapons and full body suits of armor, these knights pretty much completely obliterate each other using a sophisticated set of rules hundreds of years in the making. Rules we now know well because Harris actually stepped into the ring. We were first introduced to medieval battle at the 47th Pensic War. Personally, I was amazed at what I saw, and while sporting a barely passing renaissance getup, I tried to get involved as much as I could. I shot crossbows, threw axes, and took a small lesson on swordplay. That's perfectly legal, it's not very okay. effective. However, I was never allowed to actually join in the fights. Until now. This is the check-in? It is. You uh, need to check in as support, correct? I need to check in as a fighter, not, not support. A fighter? This oh is true. Gosh. Thank, Thank you, guys you. So much for being here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for having us. I owe my fighting chance to a knight named Chuck, who wrote in a suggestion that we check out the event. So over in the checkered helmet is Chuck Goodwin. Yes! Clean takedown, well Chuck! Done. Everything I'd seen prior to this was ruthless, but there had to be a reason people came back. I had to find out for myself. So Chuck, you're the reason we're here. Yeah. Why are you a part of all of this? Uh, I found it on YouTube. I found on YouTube, I was researching board games actually, and I saw a video of some guys doing some sword fighting stuff and I clicked on it, then I found a video of this, and I was like, this is crazy. So I just showed up one day. It seems like this is a sport built to injure people. It, it does, um, and like I said, the rules like hurt not injured, so you, we'll come out of this hurt a lot. Like I'll come out with massive bruises and body kind of beat up, but not injured, right? Um, and in, real injuries are rare, usually they're accidents, like someone, we had a guy a year ago break his leg, but because someone fell over him while they were, they were like, pushing, it wasn't in the fight. It wasn't like a weapon strike. And that could have been the same as basketball. He would have broken his leg. Before everything begins, there is an equipment check. Okay, so right now we're doing weapons check. All the weapons that we use today have to be in a very specific weight. They have to be a specific length. And our two marshals over here, who are veteran oh fighters, God. are going through all of our weapons that will be used today and making sure that they are legal for the list. Uh, it's a point. It's a sword point. Okay. Um, so I will not let this fight as it is get gotcha. this fixed or find something else to use. This is just barely under the needs to get rounded a little bit for the next event. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to grind it down to bring it into conformity. Again, it's a safety issue. So with all of the violence, we had to ask the fighters why they do it. A lot of people come from different backgrounds. Some of these guys are ex-military. Some of these guys are ex-convicts. Some of these guys are ex-drug addicts. Some of them are just nerds in the woods. A lot of them do this as a form of therapy. For the ex-military guys, I've noticed a lot of them do that because they have PTSD or some sort of issue from coming back overseas. Everybody's here for their own reasons, but everybody comes here for the thrill of combat and steel. As a little kid, we all want to be a knight, so it's just, it's a fascination with knights that has stuck with me. Because my boyfriend wants to be a legend, and I want to support him and help him become a legend in himself. Why are you a part of all of this? Violence. Just unbridled violence. I love it. It's so much fun. I dislocated my shoulder last weekend and I'm ready to get out there and do some more this weekend. It's great. I think you get a real mix of people who come from the history side of it, who are really into it for the, the historical accuracy piece. Then the other side of it, which I kind of fall more is the sports side of it, right? Like, I've done a lot of different sports in my life. Um, I've never found one where I don't have to hold back. So I get to fight at my hardest while also uh, going to use weapons, and that's pretty awesome. I lacked some things, maybe 75 pounds, a few feet on the top of my head, and a very crucial piece of protection. The good thing is, is I'm fully prepared. Luckily, I was gifted a set of armor from an off-duty knight. The armor process is intense and requires more than one person to complete. Actually, you know what? Wait on this. These first. These will get you nice and toasty real quick. Here, hold this now. You're just going to pull that as tight as you can. So that way a little bit. Turn this way. Perfect. Here, we got it. Took my finger. Oh, is that what you got me with? Oh, nice. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Like, really bad. Yeah. Of course, the, the thing that's supposed to keep you safe, I cut myself off. You're going to get snapped into this. Grab this. Put your arm up. Two on the side that connect. The back plate goes in underneath. 
slide your hand in. Grab in here, your arm in there. Most fighters bring their own armor and weapons to the event, many of which are purchased from Medieval Extreme. Medieval Extreme specializes in all things armor. They forge axes, falchions, and any other piece of equipment one needs to get started in medieval battle sports. Visit their site, MedievalExtreme.com, to shop for their fleet of period-accurate equipment and weapons. Based out of New Hampshire, Armored Combat Sports holds over 50 events every year in the U.S. alone. Today's is the Rookie Rumble, where anyone that's been a knight for less than two years can compete. And when we say compete, there are no actual weight classes, not even gender classes. A large man sized against a smaller woman is very likely. I think so much of the sport is less about your size and more about your just willingness to go in there with everything you got and just be, be, be crazy in the list, be aggressive. And, and it's, it's a lot of spirit, I think, in this sport. So I think ladies got the spirit. If they want to go out and be violent, they should join the sport. Timer, are you ready? Fight! Being a female in the sport and being able to define what the sport is and what our role is, is really exciting. Being able to meet other female fighters and prove that, yeah, we're just as legitimate in this sport. Being able to form new friendships and really make it our own, that's always exciting for me. And to be able to like encourage and grow that community and really have this equal, inclusive environment for all genders and everyone across the rainbow is an amazing opportunity. So it's gonna, with a Warlord tournament style, it's gonna start and we have a whole bunch of 1v1s. When it comes down to the 1v1 is done, whoever's the winner of that 1v1 then becomes the leader of that two-person team. <laughs> then they fight another two-person team. When they win, whoever that is, now it's a four-person team with the same first leader. It keeps going until that there are only two teams left of equal balance sizes. We have about 50 fighters here today. Um, so ultimately, at the very end of this uh, of this Warlord tournament, uh, we should have a 25 on 25 chapter match. <laughs> Aggressive melee, but there's a weapon dropped. There's a weapon dropped, the falchion is down. And I heard an armor. That was a good push. Right with that shield is ready to go. Let's see if they come out just as aggressive as they did before. Oh, and a miss! Oh! Oh, no! He got too excited for the miss, and he is wearing medieval shoes. Like we were saying earlier, on grass, that flat leather, it's almost like ice skating. Oh, he got eager, pushed through his toes, and tripped himself. The, the traction of the feet, that's insane. It's tough. Oh, really? Flat leather. No traction. Look at that. If I dig in with a normal shoe and I try to push it along the ground, Right? Versus with this. That's that's the difference. That was a double comedy of errors. Oh, hugging the stick, hugging the stick. Oh, so close. Oh! And unfortunately he's down, but he did take his opponent's weapon with him, so there's something And his helmet. And his helmet came off, which will be another yellow card. Feel good? The visibility is gnarly. Again, heavy aggression. <laughs> Switch his technique up on me. That is so exhausting. It is painfully hot. Can't see anything. I don't know how to do anything. I'm just slipping around. Carrying a dinner plate and a big old steak knife. Who won? His opponent did. The other guy. I don't know. Did I, did I get any points or anything? I no, but you're on his team for the I, next round. No. You're on his team. I was brutalized in the first round, but with a strong leader and a few fights under my belt, I was ready to get back in the ring. Okay, we know this guy in the salle knows how to swing. We saw him do it a bunch, so let's see how they uh, how he gets that aggression out. There Woo! we go. Nice duck. Nice duck. Now we have Colton with my axe. Just got taken down, but the opponent went with him. Fatality. 
Although I was able to take down my opponent, I eliminated myself in the process. Headbutt! Headbutt! Headbutts are so funny in armor. Fortunately, they are going for head attacks at the moment. They saw it. They saw it. Good, good. How are you doing? Now? What's going on? How are you doing? Man, I'm feeling real hot. But then you're in 112 right now. You know, 112 degree weather? No, no, no. Like, this is 92. You are currently at 112. I'm at 112. Yeah, it's hot. We want to be creating drama. Meet up with our guys, run away, hit you guys, and then it's a two on one, right, against them. And then we leave again. Okay, now we're, uh, now they're rolling up. We're gonna see who came to the wrong neighborhood here. Uh, with those lower numbers, they backed themselves into the corner, so that way they couldn't get flanked. Oh, there we go. Getting those ch falchion shots out. Ooh, if they could pull on the hips there, they almost have the right idea. That was a scramble. That was... They, they, they all had an idea, and they all attempted to execute it, but it just came out in the wash, and, uh... <laughs> oh! Fatality! We got a back shot, a football tackle, and a weapon drop all in one second. You okay? Yeah, I'm just cramping like a motherfucker. Oh, shit. I'm gonna pull that? Can I get someone? Sure, I got someone. By the way, you're doing great. Good job taking that exit. He's excitable. Oh. You. There's an axe there? This was not there. Yeah, I'm gonna be an axe to the back. You didn't even know it. It might look like uncontrolled chaos on the battlefield, but there is a strict set of rules that fighters must follow. So while Harris rested, I talked with Jay, who is the pioneer that brought this sport to the U.S. How'd you get started um, doing this? I mean, you're like the guy that kind of so, like started this whole thing, right? Like, so I was a Dungeons and Dragons geek in uh, the 70s. Okay. And uh, my mom said, hey, there's a medieval fair down the street. I lived in Rhode Island and uh, I went. I saw these guys fighting in armor with swords and went, I've got to do that. And I really haven't turned back. So it's 40 years this year. Uh, we built a rule set in 2013, wow. which has run you know, eight world championships with us. So. And our rules are as similar to medieval rules as we could do. Uh, and keep it safe. How are people not like losing limbs and like getting get decapitated? I don't, I don't understand. Like, it's because media has had it wrong the whole time. They've been putting it through theater and then putting it in the movies. They've been doing it wrong. You know, armor works. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't have spent all the money they had to get armor. I know, but so, I think about like the little gaps. Like, what happens well, if you? Well, you have to be able to strike those gaps. Yeah. And so you have to learn techniques with a weapon. It doesn't just go to those spots. You have to make it happen. And so a fighter that's defending, who's wearing full suit of armor, who's also swinging at you, mm -hmm. right? It takes away all those possibilities of hitting all those little spots. Yeah. And uh, so you can't. Yeah. So it's safe. So it's safe. Armored Combat Sports is one of numerous leagues that participates in medieval battle. All leagues, however, require the essentials, armor and weapons. Medieval Extreme is a retailer that sells equipment that meets the standards for ACS, IMCF, HMB, and Bohurt supplies. Medieval Extreme's period accurate weapons and armor can be purchased online at MedievalExtreme.com. Check out their selection and learn more about full contact battles. I want you on that side. Right on. Yeah, and you guys, are, we're, all, we're all runners. Okay? But take your time, take your time. Okay? We got the fight! There we go, axes are swinging. This is what I wanted to see. People using axes for their intended purpose. Let's go! Oh! Fatality. Long axe is down. Fatality. She's trying to utilize that axe. She just took a solid hit to 
Didn't Xander just momentum. shoved her off, though. Oh, she bullied into that corner, and it looks like she's down. Well fought by Colton. Oh, those thigh shots are nasty. Oh, I heard three clinks and a thunk. There you go. This is no joke. It's terrifying standing up. It's terrifying walking in. It's terrifying on the ground. It's terrifying getting hit. It's terrifying getting hit. Everything about it. I'm sitting here terrified. This is not easy stuff? Not at all. Not even close to easy. You don't have the energy you started with. No. I don't even know how to answer that. I don't have the energy to answer that. Team captain, huh? Yeah. Yeah, final round. Does that mean that you won all of your... I won all my rounds. Rounds, yeah. Yeah. So if we win these, I'm the warlord. If their captain wins, they're the warlord and they win. 30 seconds! Now that leg was cold. We got called off the rail in the far corner. We got this pine bear and throwing some shots to an unarmored leg. Keep swinging, man! Keep swinging! Oh, he's, he's not paying attention! You gotta keep that head on a swivel. Field awareness is paramount. You can't let someone sneak up on you like that. That pine bear's gotta keep swinging! I don't think he's hurt. I think he's fatigued. I'm just cramping. Hey, look at me. Get in, get in. Hold my finger. All right, get in there. Go. I'll hand it to you. No, no, he's done. No, he's all done. Hey, you get, get back out, you're done. Fatality. After one too many rounds in the blistering heat and getting made into a ragdoll, the medics pulled me from the remainder of the competition. I became one of the abounding casualties. Chuck's team carried on without me. Now is the time to strike. That was a clean neck strike from that person with the uh, scale apple tail to Chuck uh, Goodwin's neck. Chuck's got to stand up. Chuck's yeah, they came back with a big axe. That was a good block, but it's not going to hurt. Yeah. Oh, that was another neck strike. To oh, he got one. hooked and suicided. The only successful suicide we've seen today. We need more people for Team Chuck if they look want at, to stand a chance. Look at how many people were left standing, though, at the end. Team Chuck took out a good portion of them. They had the numbers that could have been a victory. The Warlord was crowned. And while my team with Chuck lost, there was still the final rookie rumble to take place. Until then, though, we talked with Brian, who has competed all around the world as a professional. So what is the community like from here You'll to the rest lot, of the globe? The like, camaraderie is worldwide is incredible. The event that I went to in Ireland uh, was put on at a castle. The owner of the castle said, uh, if you're coming from out of town, sleep on the floor. And uh, so that was another check off my bucket list to sleep in the castle. We could only imagine the international community that exists, but here it was clear. I don't know everybody, but I've already heard that somebody's from New Orleans, somebody's from Virginia. It's people wanting to know you through your fighting style and getting that kind of relationship going because they joke around before and after they become friends and fighting creates a different kind of bond and respect. There's a, I think there's a lot of sense of camaraderie. In my opinion, it's very historic to beat the crap out of each other and then have a you know, pint of meat at the end of it. That feels very historic to me, very accurate. Um, I think it's just really a, it's a human nature thing. I mean, we, we're humans, we're violent. We, and I think denying that is kind of silly. So we're all here to be violent and have a good time afterwards. <laughs> Though my time in the ring was called off, to end the day was the rookie rumble. So he's the first one to start in the ring. Every 15 seconds, he's going to send a new, two fighters. He's going to send two new fighters. Pitching each other to the ground, kick and tackling. It's going to be great. Last one standing wins. Yeah. Hang me out. 
Now, Justin! Now! Now, Justin! Also, be sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on so we can explore something new together.